There are four vital elements needed for life. Number one is oxygen. Number two is water. Our body from the neck down is 75% water, from the neck up 85% water. The third most vital element needed for life is sodium. And the fourth is potassium. Water. We will gain insights from Barbara O'Neill, a naturopath and health educator focused on empowering you to take control of your health through natural means. Today, we're going to dive into a topic that's vital for our overall well-being, the importance of water, sodium, and potassium. At the end, we'll reveal a surprisingly healthier alternative, which is a superfood common in countries which have longer lifespans. Water is essential for every function in our bodies. It makes up about 60% of our body weight and plays a critical role in regulating temperature, aiding digestion, transporting nutrients, and flushing out toxins. But hydration is more than just drinking enough water, it's also about balancing electrolytes like sodium and potassium, which are crucial for maintaining proper hydration and cellular function. One of the most important aspects of maintaining good health is achieving the right balance between sodium and potassium. This balance is crucial for maintaining healthy blood pressure, preventing muscle cramps, and ensuring optimal hydration. Too much sodium and too little potassium can lead to issues like hypertension and cardiovascular disease, while the right balance supports overall well-being. Understanding the roles of water, sodium, and potassium, and how they work together is key to maintaining your health. By staying hydrated, consuming the right amount of sodium, and increasing your intake of potassium-rich foods, you can support your body's natural functions and improve your overall health. Let's make informed choices for a healthier, more balanced life. Now let's listen to Barbara tell us more about these essential elements our body needs. One of the first questions I ask people when they come to me for help with their health is how much water do you drink? Here are some of the answers. Oh, I don't like water. Another answer is not much. Another answer is I don't drink water or I'm visiting the little house all day. Another answer is if I drink too much water my, my legs swell. These last two answers tell me that the water is not getting inside the cell. You know there's been some deaths on the Kokoda Trail and these people are drinking five litres of water a day. They're perspiring huge amounts. So the water's going in and the water's coming out but it's not coming out as water. Have you ever licked your perspiration? It's very salty. These people are losing a lot of sodium, but not just sodium, they're losing a lot of other minerals. So how do we get the water inside the cell? Because these people just drinking water, the water is bypassing the cell and just coming straight out in the form of perspiration or urine. But both perspiration and urine is just not water that's coming out. Yes, waste is coming out, but there are also minerals that are being lost. Don't forget to stay tuned for an amazing bonus. In the meantime, Barbara will now explain how water is absorbed by the body. So how do we get the water inside the cell? To look at that, we need to go to the third most vital element needed for life, which is sodium. We need to look at the way sodium is found in nature. Seawater contains 92 minerals. Seawater is often called an isotonic solution because it is the exact same mineral and proportion as is found in the body. Of those 92 minerals, 30% is made up of sodium and approximately 50% is made up of chloride. Because sodium chloride makes up the largest amount of the minerals, when the water is evaporated from the seawater, the first crystals formed are sodium chloride. And so what happens is usually that is scooped up, it is bleached white, 
aluminium is put with it so it runs freely. There's your table salt. Table salt contains two minerals and those two minerals are sodium chloride. Tell us more about sodium and chloride. Sodium chloride are such harsh minerals that if you were to inject sodium chloride straight into the veins, you would kill the person. Sodium chloride, they are both essential to the body. Sodium is the third most vital element needed for life, but we need to be taking sodium into our body the way it's found in nature with all of its other minerals. The salt that we use is Celtic salt. And Celtic salt contains 82 minerals. That's pretty close. Where are the other 10? They're in such pico proportions, barely measurable, that it's impossible that a few are lost. But hey, 82 is still a lot closer to 92 than 2. What else about sodium and chloride? As I said, sodium and chloride are both important. Sodium is used everywhere in the body. It's in its largest abundance on the outside of the cell. We call that extracellular fluid. And the largest concentration of mineral inside the cell is potassium. Potassium is found in rich abundance in all your fresh fruits and vegetables. Chloride. Our hydrochloric acid is made from chloride, so chloride is important. So often people are told that they need to stop salt. Why are they told to stop salt? Because they're having too much of the sodium chloride, too much of the table salt. And because it's in an imbalanced form, it's causing an imbalance in the body right down at the cellular level. Sodium chloride are such harsh minerals that they kill the taste buds. They're harsh when they're by themselves. They're harsh when they're not balanced with all the other minerals. Have you noticed that people that use a lot of table salt, they put it on everything and they put it on even before they taste the food? <laughs> Do you know why? Because it kills the taste buds. No wonder they can't taste anything. So the more they use it, the more they have to use. Whereas Celtic salt, with all of its minerals, awakens the taste buds. You can get other salts like Himalayan salt. It has about 82 min minerals. There's a Murray River salt. And they're both like pink flakes. It's got about, I think, 75 minerals. So there are a few salts. If you're not sure on the mineral balance of your salt that you're buying, just ring the manufacturer and ask him for a mineral analysis of his salt. No salt is important. At the end of this video is an eye-opener bonus that can add yours to your life, so stay tuned. So Barbara, why is salt important? No, we need salt as it's found in nature with all of its other minerals, and this salt brings a balance. When someone is not having enough potassium, and if someone is not eating any fresh fruits and vegetables, their potassium levels go down. And if that same person is putting table salt on everything with its high sodium and chloride, sodium levels rise. Barbara will now tell us more about how salt works at the cellular level. Notice that there's a bilayered membrane around every cell and in that membrane there are sodium potassium pumps that basically look like that. And these pumps are constantly working like this, causing the sodium and the potassium to be monitored at the right levels. But if someone is getting too much sodium and not having enough potassium, then the concentration of sodium rises, the concentration of potassium lowers, and because of osmosis diffusion, too much sodium starts to merge in to the cell. When too much sodium merges into the cell, the cell swells. There's your high blood pressure. Your doctor is right. Table salt will increase blood pressure. But the answer is not no salt, because if no salt happens, then sodium levels go too low, and the little bit of sodium that is found inside the cell, it drops too low, and then the cell swells. So no salt and 
Table salt both can contribute to high blood pressure. We need to be having salt in its balanced form with all of its other minerals. And I think you'll agree with me, what's a baked potato without salt? <laughs> what's avocado and tomato on sourdough spelt toast without salt? Salt awakens the food. And your hydrochloric acid is made from chloride. We cannot digest properly unless we're having adequate salt. The oh my god, I never knew that bonus will be coming shortly. Now Barbara will tell us more about the importance of salt at the cellular level. Lining the gastrointestinal tract are villi. On those villi are receptor sites and these receptor sites are to take the glucose through and into the blood. Inside that receptor site there is a carrier and the carrier is the one that takes the glucose through and into the blood. But the carrier says, I will not accept you glucose unless you come with a molecule of sodium. When the sodium is present, then the carrier will take the glucose through and into the blood. Let me give you straight from the horse's mouth on this. This was a sentence in the Anatomy and Physiology book. Let me give it to you. Glucose, Start again. Sodium is the main transport system of glucose across the brush border cell and into the blood. You will find that in every anatomy and physiology book. What's happening if someone's not having any salt? Well, there is a little bit of sodium in, in your food, in your fruits and vegetables. If there's not enough sodium around, not every bit of glucose can get into your blood which explains why some people that go on a salt-free diet find their energy levels go down because they're not getting the nutrients out of their gut as they should and into the blood. No wonder it's the most vital element needed for life. We need it. What makes the salt that you use special? The salt that we use here at Misty Mountain Health Retreat is Celtic salt. And that Celtic salt contains three magnesiums. It contains magnesium bromide, magnesium sulfate, and magnesium chloride. Magnesium is a water-hungry molecule so it's always trying to pull the water into itself. That explains why on a, on a rainy day, our salt can get quite moist because magnesium is a water hungry molecule. So when you put a crystal of the Celtic salt on your tongue and then drink a glass of water, when the crystal's on your tongue, even if it only be for a few seconds, then the mucous membranes in the mouth are absorbing, first of all, the magnesium. Remember, it's a water-hungry molecule. And that magnesium is taken via the blood straight to the cell and it pulls the water inside the cell. It is the quickest way to hydrate a body is to put that crystal of Celtic salt on your tongue take that glass of water and it ensures that the water is pulled inside the cell. I suggest that we do it at least once or twice a day. Here on the detox program when guests are having the exercise program especially in the summer and then the steam bath at night I advise they do it about three times a day. That would be about every second glass of water. If you put the salt into the water, the magnesium in the salt will absorb all the water into it so you haven't got that free access of magnesium as easily as as you put it on your tongue, which will take it and through the blood to the cell to pull that water inside the cell. When the water goes through that membrane, there's a little motor in that membrane and as the water rushes through that little membrane starts spinning and the spinning of that little motor inside the cell gives us a unit of energy. So when everyone's feeling tired mid-morning all reaching for their Mars bar or cake or pie or sandwich, cup of coffee, just take your crystal of Celtic salt, have your glass of water and you watch your energy levels have a little pickup. 
because as we saw the other day, that stomach needs a rest between meals. It doesn't need more food. It needs water. And often the body doesn't know the difference between water and hunger. That's why if it's between meals and you're hungry, just have a glass of water. If you're feeling tired, have that little bit of salt before you have the water and it'll pick you up. That's why if you're going to go and walk the Kokoda Trail, make sure you have a little bag of salt crystals, Celtic salt crystals in your pocket. How is Celtic salt different from other specialty salts? Celtic salt has more magnesium than the Himalayan salt or the Murray River salt and you can see it because it's just a lot wetter. The other salts do have magnesiums but not quite as much as the Celtic salt. So if you're going to put the Celtic salt crystals into your grinder just dry them out in the oven first before you put them into your grinder. When the weather's very, very wet, sometimes we have to take the salt out of our grinder two or three times a week, dry it out again, put it back into the grinder so that it can be ground at the table. What's special about seawater? When you think about seawater, that it's called an isotonic solution, which is it's the exact same mineral imbalance and proportion is found in blood, in found in the, in the intra and extracellular fluid in the tissues. You can see why in the sailor's manual it says if you're shipwrecked to start sipping little bits of seawater straight away. And it will keep you alive for many days, but if the person waits three days till they're very dehydrated, then drinks a whole glass of water, you can see that that will put the mineral balance in and out of their cells way out and they certainly can start to go a little bit mad. Also in the war, if the Navy had wounded men that needed a blood transfusion, they would transfuse with seawater. Remember, it's the exact same mineral balance and proportion as is found in the body. Barbara will tell us why salt issues in France don't exist. I have an interview in one of our books of a Dr. La Langry, who is a French doctor who's written a whole book on salt. He said, there are no salt issues in France, because he said in France we use the salt from the Celtic Sea. He said, there are three books in France written by doctors on salt. <laughs> There's no salt issue, he said, because we use the mineralized salt. He said, if someone's got high blood pressure, I put them on the mineralized salt and it can balance it out. It's only when sodium is in an imbalanced state or lost its savor, as the Bible verse says, that it becomes a problem. Now for the amazing bonus, just after these final thoughts by Barbara. So when you think about it, we cry seawater, we sweat seawater, baby swims in seawater. It's this same mineral balance. Our bonus is the superfood, which comes from the sea, wakame. Wakame is most commonly consumed in East Asian countries, where it has been a staple in traditional diets for centuries. In Japan, the average lifespan is five to seven years longer than many Western countries. And in South Korea, the average lifespan is for two to six years longer than in many Western countries. This superfood, dried ground wakame seaweed, is often viewed as a healthier alternative to salt because it offers a range of essential nutrients and beneficial compounds that support overall health. Celtic salt can be beneficial for its mineral content, but its high sodium content means it should be used in moderation. For optimal health, focusing on nutrient-dense foods like wakame while using salt sparingly can be a balanced approach. Wakame is most commonly consumed in East Asian countries, where it has been a staple in traditional diets for centuries. When comparing Celtic salt and wakame in terms of health benefits, it's important to recognize that each offers distinct advantages depending on your nutritional needs. Celtic salt, known for its range of trace minerals including magnesium, calcium, potassium, and sodium, provides benefits like supporting electrolyte balance and muscle function. It's less processed than table salt and retains more natural minerals. However, its high sodium content means it should be used sparingly, particularly by those with hypertension or heart conditions. 
On the other hand, the superfood wakame is a highly nutrient-dense seaweed that stands out for its broad spectrum of essential vitamins and minerals. It is rich in vitamins A, C, D, E, K, and B-complex vitamins and contains significant amounts of iodine, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and iron. Wakame also provides dietary fiber, which supports digestive health and beneficial omega-3 fatty acids like EPA eicosapentaenoic acid. Additionally, wakame contains antioxidants such as fucoxanthin, which may help combat oxidative stress and inflammation, and polysaccharides like fucoidin that may support detoxification and immune function. While Celtic salt offers valuable minerals, its high sodium content makes it less suitable for those needing to monitor their sodium intake. Wakame, with its rich nutrient profile and various health benefits, is generally considered a healthier choice overall. Incorporating nutrient-dense foods like wakame into your diet while using salt in moderation can provide a balanced approach to maintaining optimal health. Remember, your health is the lock and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.